Hey, what's going on guys? This is Derek R from Computer Headquarters and welcome back to our channel. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Derek R from Computer Headquarters and today we are going to benchmark this 3070 from EVGA. We are planning to use uh, about four different CPUs. We are going to benchmark an i3 10100F, an i7 4790K over up to 4.6 gigahertz, and a 6700. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna put this 3070 in. Uh, so the i3 10100F is a pretty good CPU for $100. Um, in Passmark, it passes a lot of the CPUs pretty badly actually, so would I ever recommend the CPU? I mean, yes, if you're on a budget for a hundred bucks, would I use it for video editing and streaming? I will not really buy buy for that. Um, I would say not a good reason to buy this for video editing or streaming. It can do it, but not the greatest thing. The good reason to buy this is they're actually available, boards cheaper, and also it can save you a lot more money overall, and then you can upgrade later on. The i3 is not bad of a CPU. $100, you can get you 1080p max settings, so on a certain uh, GPU. The 3070 might be a little bottle rank, but we will never know. We will start benchmarking right now, and uh, yeah. So. All right, so we're in GTA. We are running the i3 system. Right now, it's kind of overkill because we are using a 360 millimeter AIO. Um, so the system that we have, it's an i3 10100F, 16 gigs of RAM, and a RTX 37 from EVJ, and also we are using a H410 board. So right now we're playing some GTA 5 at max settings. So yeah, um, it's pretty smooth on this monitor. By the way, we are using a HP Omen um, 100, 100 first monitor. It looks pretty smooth. We're getting around 188 frames per second right now on this scene. Uh, when, we, when we have to go outside, we will actually probably get some performance dips. Hands behind your back! Oh, come on, mister! We're giving you everything you want! I don't even think about it! Oh, oh. I'll do it! I'll do it! Oh, God. Get in there! Sit tight! I'll handle the plastic! Don't blow yourself up! Alright, we gonna do this? Huh? <laughs> Show me the money! Slow and steady, T. Slow and steady. <coughs> oh! There it is! We're just taking the non-sequential uh, notes. Uh, there's enough here for us all to enjoy. Depends on how you look at it. Fuck! 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 Oh, fuck! You hear that? Sirens! Fuck the cops! T, hit the shutter switch! Alrighty guys, so we just ran Cinebentor 20, so we scored around 2060 points. I just realized that our temperatures were pretty good. We're at 55 degrees max, and we are using a 360 email AIO. A bit overkill, but why not? Whatever. Yeah. So right now in the test bench, we have the 4790K at SOC settings. We did actually have it at 4.6 at 1.25 volts, so almost 1.3, but it hit 100 degrees because the CPU is known for having bad solder underneath the IHS and it just overheats. So the CPU is actually refreshed. It's DevCam refresh. Pretty good CPU for its time. Badass. Uh, Z87 or Z97 board for the CPU. When we're caught to like 4.8, 4.9 gigahertz, you can get up there with performance. I did do one run with the CPU 4.6 and the IPC or the multi-core is pretty bad. It was around 1600 and the i3 scored around 2060, so you can definitely see a big performance difference between the generations. So we just installed the 6700 into a Z170 board from ASUS and we have it on stock. Mac temperature, you're getting around 57 degrees and 
for a warning, we are using a NZC X62 360mm AIO. So the CPU was pretty good for its time, including the K because it was like the tier gaming CPU for streaming video editing at 4K if you wanted to by 4K threads. The CPU goes around for around 100 bucks to 150 dollars to use. Honestly, not bad of a CPU, but this is but it's not the K, it's the non-K. So honestly, the CPU is pretty good if you want to do just high 1080p gaming, honestly, for, for on a budget. So alrighty then. So we are going to show you a comparison between a 4790K, the i3 10100F, and an i7 6700. Pros and cons for buying an i3 10100F. Cheap motherboards, the CPUs are more available than 5000 series. Cons about it is uh, you can do somewhat editing on it, but not 1080p. Streaming, I would not recommend. You definitely want a stiff core or higher for doing 1080p 60 frames for live streaming. Reason why to not buy an i7, preferably the old ones. Uh, the fourth gen and sixth gen i7, they are pretty good for its time, but now you can see through our results, the i3 is actually a lot better better ipc and better platform also they're kind of expensive the motherboards for like a high-end z170 board are over 500 dollars on ebay the final conclusion of this whole testing with testing the three cpus is the i3 is pretty good i'm i'm very impressed for 100 dollars. you can actually get boards like these right here for pretty cheap plus also cpu off of my percentage for 100 dollars, and boards are almost 150 dollars. depends on which one you get for a h410 uh, chipset the i3 is pretty good on pretty much for anything except for heavy loads on video editing or live streaming. So if I would be able to rate these, the i3 one with flying colors for the price. Second place was actually the i7 4790K and also the third place, the real life place was the 6700. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching. I hope you hit the bell icon and please subscribe. Alright, see you.